Hello everyone, my name is Ujwal Gandhi from spatialthoughts.com and I want to welcome you to this Google Earth Engine guided project. This is a video series where I'll explain to you step by step how to work with nighttime lights data and how to extract statistics over different admin regions or different classes. I like this project because it will teach you some advanced Earth Engine coding skills, but it is a beginner friendly project. So you start from basics and slowly we'll build the script that will do more and more complex things and we'll end up with something that is pretty complex, pretty hard to do this on a desktop based software, but we we'll leverage the full power of the Earth Engine system and you'll learn some new skills along the way. This is a guided project. It means I'll be building the project step by step in each video. I'll be coding live and explaining each step. At the end of the series, maybe you can adapt the code and modify it to suit your needs. So with that, let's get started. We'll start with a brief overview of the project, the data set and the methodology that we're going to use. The link to the presentation is available in the video description. The goal of the project is to work with the time series of nighttime light images and extract statistics over various admin regions. Uh, the most commonly used statistics is something called sum of lights. That means you take the intensity values of nighttime lights images, sum it up over a region, and that represents the total light from the region for that particular time period. This is a useful statistic that correlates directly with the economic output of the region, urbanization of the region, and so on. So we'll compute sum of lights in an admin region for urban regions as well as agriculture regions for each year. And we'll do the same for every admin one region in a country. This sounds like a very complex thing to do. And indeed, if you're a beginner in Earth Engine, you might find it very challenging even to start attempting to solve this problem. But once you learn the process, you will know how to break down this problem and build each part so that you can finally put them together and do this analysis. And this will also help you in your project where if you encounter a similar problem, you'll be able to attempt by uh, following the similar workflow. Let's look at the data sets that we'll be using. The first one is the nighttime lights data. There are satellites that capture images of the earth at night. This is useful to identify urban settlements because nighttime lights kind of correlate with where people are. So there are two main satellite programs. Historically, there was this data set called DMSP, uh, which operated from 1992 to 2013. It had a resolution of one kilometer. So each pixel is one kilometer by one kilometer and it had a pretty nice global coverage. The successor to DMSP is worse. This is a satellite that is currently operational. Uh, it's operational from 2012. Uh, it has got higher resolution. So each pixel is 500 meter in resolution and pretty much the same global coverage. The satellites are continuously capturing the images. These images are then taken, processed, uh, processed for cloud cover, et cetera. And then you get a monthly or a yearly composite image. If you're interested in working with the worst data, this is the highest quality data that is currently available. They are annual composites created from the worst nighttime lights images, and you get one image per year from 2013 to 2021 at 500 meter resolution. If you're interested in working with the DMSP data, I suggest you look at the CCNL dataset, which is a reprocessed version of DMSP, and will give you a consistent time series over from 1992 to 2013 at one kilometer resolution. Uh, many of you might be interested in long decadal changes, and that means you want to work with both DMSP and WORS. Since they were two different satellite programs, two different sensors, uh, you cannot use them directly because you, they are measuring different things. So there are projects uh, which have tried to calibrate, cross-calibrate both the sensors and give you a consistent time series for combining both the satellites. Uh, there's HNTL, which gives you a 92 to 2021 time series combining both DMSP as well as worst data. And this is at one kilometer resolution. Uh, there's also other projects which will try to do calibrate DMSP to worse, worse to DMSP and so on. So this is another project which will give you a time series of worse and DMSP where they uh, try to uh, harmonize DMSP to worse and give you a data set at 500 meter resolution. Uh, you can pick whichever data set suits your requirement for your application. For this project, we're going to use the first one, which is the, the annual uh, nighttime lights composite from 2013 to 2021. Uh, our project requires us to compute stats over some administrative boundaries. So we need a data set for administrative boundaries. If you want country level boundaries, I recommend using LSIB. These are uh, good country boundaries and you will be able to use them to compute country level statistics. 
Um, there is GAL dataset, which is widely used. This is produced by uh, UN FAO program. They have both a country admin one as well as admin two boundaries. So you can uh, use uh, those for your project. They are a little old. So countries like India, where the boundaries, uh, admin two boundaries, especially they've changed a lot since then, they are not really useful as much. Uh, there's another data set called geo boundaries, which also has boundaries from admin zero all the way up to admin four. And this is pretty new data set. So this is something that, you know, I recommend you try it out and you, I generally found them to be quite good and quite updated. So this is what we'll be using for this particular project. Next, we need some land cover data sets. Remember, we have to compute the statistics over both urban pixels as well as agriculture pixels. So we need to know which pixels are what, and that's why we need land cover data. Uh, the most widely used data set for this is MODIS. There's an annual land cover product that is available at 500 meter resolution. Uh, there's also other products like ESA World Cover. This is currently the best, highest resolution global product that is available to you. If you want a really high quality land cover product, that is current and uh, quite good. You should use this product. This is available at 10 meter spatial resolution, uh, but it's only available for 2021 and 2022. There are also other products like CGLS, which is a 100 meter product, uh, time series classification product from 2015 to 2019. Since we want a time series of the land cover classification data and our worst data that we'll be using is 500 meter resolution, the MODIS land cover is a great fit for this project. So these are the three data sets that we'll be working with. Two of them are image collections, and one of them is a feature collection. Now let's look at how we'll be approaching this problem to extract the statistics from this image collections and feature collection. Remember the workflow in Earth Engine? You typically start with a collection of images or features. You apply some filter. So that's the first step. We'll take the data set and select the features or the images that we want. Next, we want to apply some computation. In Earth Engine, you want to process them in parallel so you can leverage the full computation power of Earth Engine. So you figure out how you want to process one of the images and you write a function that says, given this image or a feature, this is how I'll process it. And then you map that over your collection. That means each, of, each item in the collection is processed independently in parallel and the same function will be done and you'll be able to process large amounts of data using parallel computing. Once all of these images are processed, you need to describe what you want to do with them. You can say, I have processed all these images and I want to create a composite image. And you can ask for the composite image, that's called a reduce operation. You can also ask for some statistics. So you can say, take this admin region, give me the sum of all the pixels within each image. And that's a reduce operation as well. Or you can generate a chart and that's also a reduce operation. So in Earth Engine, your typical workflow looks uh, like a combination of filter, map, and reduce. And that's what we're going to learn to say, how do we take our problem and break it down into these components? First, the filters. Uh, we'll take each data set and filter it to get the data for our region of interest. So for admin boundaries, we'll apply a filter and say, uh, you pick a country and you find all admin one region for that country. For the night lights, we'll apply a filter for the time. So let's say, give me images for the time period that we're looking for. Uh, similarly, we'll take the MODIS images and apply the time filter for the, the years that you were looking for. We can also apply a location filter, but all, all these images are global images, so it doesn't really matter. If your collection has images uh, which are smaller, then you should also apply a location filter, so you only get images over your region of interest. Next, how do we write a map reduce code to extract the statistics? Uh, let's do it step by step. First, uh, we say, give me one image, one nighttime lights image, and one admin region. And I want to compute the statistics over that one region. So give me all the pixels and give me the sum of those pixels. Uh, this is done using this function called reduce region in Earth Engine. And you have an image, you have a geometry, and Earth Engine can give you the statistic of the image pixels within that region. And you just get a number. So you say, give me the sum of pixels from this nighttime lights image and you get uh, an image. So simple enough. Now, how do we compute the sum of lights for multiple images? Well, we already know how to compute the sum of lights for one image for one region. You simply put that computation in a function 
and then map it over the entire collection. And that means for each image, the, uh, the function will run and compute the statistics of that region. And you will get, you can get a collection which you can plot and create a chart like this. Okay. So the second step was we could compute the stats of multiple images for a single region. The next step is to compute this time series statistics by class. So not just the total sum of flights, but sum of flights over urban as well as agriculture pixels. So first we get the images that have the pixels of urban and agriculture pixels for each year. Once we have that, we write a function that for each year, it takes the image for that year and then mask out all the pixels of all of the pixels except the class that we're interested in. So if you want to compute the stats of the urban pixels, we'll mask out, we'll remove all the pixels that are not urban. And that in Earth Engine is done using the update mask function. So for each class, we'll say update mask urban. So I'll just select only the urban pixels, we compute the stats. Then we'll say update mask agriculture, and it'll only select the agriculture pixels, and then we can compute the stats of that. Okay. And once we have a function that does it for one year, we'll just map it over the all, all the year images, and we get something like this, where we have the sum of lights for different regions. Okay. Uh, this method is simpler and much more approachable, if, uh, but if you have many, many different classes, doing this can be tedious and also inefficient. So if you want to do this for, say, 10 classes or 20 classes, there's a better approach uh, using group reducer, but the code for that is a bit complex. Uh, you can look at this link in the Earth Engine documentation on how to use the group reducer for calculating the stats over multiple classes in a single operation versus doing this in this step. So far, we've been using only one region. What if you want to do all of this for multiple regions? Well, we do the same thing. We know how to do this for one region for each class over each year. We now take uh, whatever code we've written, we update it so that we use the function reduce regions. This is a function that can take multiple regions as input instead of just one single geometry. And again, you just update this and you supply not just one feature, but all the features that you're interested in, so let's say all admin regions in your country. And you'll get the statistics for each, each admin one region. And finally, once you get this, you'll get this nested collection where you have a collection for each region, where inside of that you'll have the data for each year and so on. So you need to call something called flatten. I'll explain that more when we get to the code. And at the end, you'll get a table like this where for each admin region for each year, you get uh, the statistics for urban agriculture as well as the total region. And this will be the final product of our project. So this is how I've broken this project down into different parts. First, we'll learn how to compute the stats for a region. Then we'll say, we'll compute the stats for a region by class. Then we'll say, we'll compute the stats of region by class for multiple years. And finally, we'll say, we'll compute the stats by class by year for all the regions in our uh, interest area. So let's get started. You'll find the code for this project at this link. Once you go there, you'll be able to click on a link that will add the repository containing the code for this project along with many other projects into your code editor. So visit this link and you'll be able to find the instructions. The instructions and the link are also in your video description. So see you in the next video where we'll start coding.